Kuzhiko. Good morning, Mina, ma'am. Yeah, good morning. Ma'am, we'll be beginning the function in a minute, ma'am. Please, please. Sure, sure, sure. Five three, five three, seven three four. Hmm. Pleasant good morning, one and all. The IQAC of their mother college, Kuruvilangat, is privileged to host a NAC sponsored online national seminar on assessment and accreditation in the light of NEP 2020. This two day national seminar is intended to throw light on some of the pertinent dimensions of the watershed moment in the higher education scenario, NEP 2020. Joining hands with the organizing team for an intellectual discourse, let's invoke the presence of God Almighty. I invite Richard Jacob, second year BA English student for the prayer song. As the deer banner for the water summer so long after thee, you alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship Thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To You alone may my spirit yield. You desire and I long to worship thee and I long to worship thee. Thank you, Richard. The vibrant IQAC team of the college deserves all praise for organizing this online seminar. I cordially invite IQAC coordinator, Mr. Anish Thomas, to formally welcome the August gathering. Respected uh, principal of the Amada College, Dr. Sunil C. Matthew, our distinguished uh, chief guest, Dr. Eina Ghane, deputy advisor of National Assessment and Accreditation Council, vice principal, Reverend Father Tinoy Matthew, Dr. Tony Thomas, assistant professor of chemistry department and the coordinator of this national seminar, the joint coordinator of uh, IQAC, Dr. Tina Sebastian, four team members of IQAC, head of the departments, uh, participants from different parts of the country, dear faculty members and administrative staffs of the Mother College, students of the Mother College, a warm good morning to all. Warm welcome to the inaugural uh, meeting of the today's online next sponsored national seminar on assessment and accreditation in the light of NEP 2020. National Education Policy, or NEP, is a topic of hot discussion and a much debated one now. The National Education Policy 2020 outlines the vision of a new education system of India by replacing the National Policy on Education of 1986. This policy aims to India's education system. By 20 uh, NEP ambitions an India centric education system that contributes directly to transforming our nation sustainably into an equitable and vibrant knowledge society by providing high quality education to all. 
the NEP 2020 enacts numerous changes in India's education policy as well as in the higher education system. So this brings about a lot of structural as well as functional shifts in the higher education scenario. Among such changes, most important one is the changes that may happen in the assessment and accreditation process. This online uh, national seminar sponsored by the National Assessment and Accreditation Council is planned as a two days academic exercise including technical sessions and paper presentations. This seminar will address the important dimensions like future of higher education institutions, outcome-based education and its attainment, academic bank of credit and its utility, blended learning education challenges in the light of NEP. Eminent resource persons from different parts of the country will deliberate on each of these areas. Purpose will also be presented on the relevant areas. As you are aware, this national seminar is conducted with the sponsorship of National Assessment and Accreditation Council. At the outset, I would like to thank the director, the Southern Region uh, coordinators and advisors for collaborating with us for organizing this national seminar based on NEP. Uh, I believe that uh, this seminar will familiarize the participants, the various stakeholders about the changes that is going to take place in the higher education sector with the implementation of NEP, especially in the accreditation and assessment scenario. Now, let me uh, come to my duty. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome our dear principal, Dhammada College principal, Dr. Sunil C. Matthew, who is the president of today's inaugural function. As the chairman of the internal quality assurance cell and the principal, Sunil Sir is very particular and concerned about the quality initiatives to be implemented in a higher education institution. This national seminar is, in fact, uh, the brainchild of Dr. Sunil C. Matthew, which is developed and implemented through the IQC team. He took much pain in the identifying the apt resource person and provide advisors at each stage in the conduct of this national seminar. Welcoming captain to his ship is a matter of formality only. Our dear sir, on behalf of our present here, I extend you a warm welcome to this inaugural ceremony and request you to preside the meeting. Our chief guest for the inaugural ceremony uh, and the resource person of the today's first technical session is uh, Dr. Lena Ghane. She is a deputy advisor, National Assessment Accreditation Council. She is a professor in physics and an academician, a writer and a social worker. Uh, we are very thankful to you, madam, for accepting our request for joining this national seminar, representing NAC as well as a resource person for the technical session. In fact, we are indebted to you because uh, while uh, scheduling the program, we find it tough <laughs> Uh, we find it to get results from NAC for the national as well as the technical session on accreditation and assessment. Uh, Madam, when we approach you with this purpose, you are so welcoming and accepted our presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam. On behalf of the management and the internal quality assurance cell of Dharmada College and all the participants, I extend a heartfelt welcome to you, Dr. Lina Ghana, to this inaugural function. Our uh, resource persons uh, for the following technical sessions are also present online during this uh, inaugural ceremony. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome Dr. Uh, Joseph Xavier Raste, former principal of Loyola College Chennai, who will be taking the second technical session. Respected Father, warm welcome to this inaugural ceremony. Also, other resource persons, uh, Dr. Ara Murugappan, uh, Dean, Curriculum Development, Thiagraja College, Autonomous Madre, Dr. S.S. Dhakar, Vice Chancellor, ITM University, Professor and School of Engineering and Technology, Christ, Dean to University, Bangalore, and Dr. Gabriel. Professors on behalf of the and of the sea of the and all the participants, I welcome you.
so you are not audible ma'am we regret the uh, technical delay ma'am please uh, kindly wait ma'am we'll sort it out soon ma'am we are sorry for the technical glitch well let me uh, continue uh, our resource persons are also present here i would like to uh, welcome uh, dr v joseph sevier rasti the former principal laiola college chennai uh, respected father warm welcome to the nagar ceremony our other resource persons for the technical sessions dr r murugappan uh, dean curriculum development yakrachar college madurai dr ss bakha uh, vice chancellor it university kwalia dr ivan jos professor and dean school of engineering and technology christ Bangalore and Dr. Gabriel Simon Patel, Professor of Commerce and Director of Activity, Kerala University, are also present online. Dear respected professors, a uh, warm welcome to the inaugural uh, ceremony. I also take this opportunity to formally welcome our Vice Principal, Reverend Father Dr. Reverend Father Tinoy Matthew, who is also a member of Internal Quality Assurance Cell of the College, to this inaugural function. Uh, we have uh, participants and paper presenters representing various stakeholders from different parts of India. I am thankful to them for showing interest in this academic activity. On behalf of the management and organizing team, I welcome all of you to this today's national seminar. I would like to acknowledge the efforts of the, uh, the coordinator of this national seminar, Dr. Tony Thomas. Dr. Tony has been working on this seminar since uh, last month, beginning with the preparation of proposal, arranging the resource persons, dealing with the technical aspects, and so on. He took much pain in organizing the seminar in this form. On behalf of all present here, I wholeheartedly welcome Dr. Tony. I also welcome the joint coordinator of internal quality assurance cell Dr Tina Sebastian all the IQC team members uh, and my dear colleagues teaching as well as administrative staffs and students of their mother family to this fruitful academic exercise uh, last let's put our brains and hands together to make this two days uh, national seminar a great success uh, by understanding the challenges and opportunities uh, brought by the national education policy in our domain thank you thank you all Thank you, Anish sir. The presence of the college principal, Dr. Sunil C. Matthew, is a boon to IQSC, owing to his in-depth expertise and extensive exposure in embracing assessment and accreditation requirements at institutional level. I respectfully invite you, sir, for the presidential address. Honorable Chief Guest of the Day, Dr. Lena Gahane, Deputy Advisor NAC. esteemed the resource person dr dr joseph saver sj former principal leola college chennai reverend father dinoy mathew the vice principal of devamada college reverend dr joel pandare parambil the bursar of the college shri anish thomas the iqsc coordinator and convener of the seminar dr tony thomas the coordinator of the seminar dr tina sebastian mr subin vargis mr justin jos and dr smita sebastian the joint coordinators of the seminar distinguished participants from various institutions respected head of the departments my dear teachers research scholars and students a very good morning to all indian higher education is governed by a large number of regulatory bodies responsible for setting standards framing policies guidelines frameworks and regulation for establishment of institutes by way of recognition and approval maintaining the quality standards funding and other functions some of them are ugc aict nmc bci inc and ncvet in addition the quality assessment is done by national assessment and accreditation council and national board of accreditation but in the due course of time several problems with this existing regulatory system of higher education have been identified many are of the opinion that too many and too much regulations with the too little effect of power a conflicting regulations lack of accountability and so on but nep 2020 transforms this regulatory system of higher education as our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji rightly said till date we have been focusing on what to think in our education policy but in the nep we are focusing on how to think nep has touched all the arenas of education and aims at 
delivering state of the art education to empower students faculty educators and ultimately the nation one of the key transformations that nep has brought is the introduction of a single authoring body that would take care of all the functions of higher education the higher education commission of india you can say that it is a one stop solution for all the needs of higher education institutions under the vast umbrella of hci there will be various verticals that would look after accreditation funding for institutions and academics with the establishment of nep 2020 distinct functions of regulation accreditation funding and academic standard setting to be performed by distinct independent and empowered bodies these four verticals will be governed by national higher education regulatory council national accreditation council higher education grants council and general education council the primary goal is to make the work processes agile free transparent and highly effective This seminar as its name truly indicates discusses the changes that is going to happen particularly in the realm of assessment and accreditation on implementation of the national education policy assessment and accreditation play a vital role in the development of any educational institution it ensures excellence of the academic programs offered by the higher education institution the nac has been set up to facilitate the orienting institutions to assess their performance vis a vis set parameters through introspection and a process that provides space for participation of the institution we are indebted to the national assessment and accreditation council as our iqc coordinator rightly pointed out just uh, before for giving financial assistance to this online national seminar on assessment and accreditation in the light of nep 2020 organized by the iqc of devamada college above all dr lena gahane the deputy advisor of nac is with us to inaugurate this seminar and to engage the first technical session on assessment and accreditation methodology in the revised accreditation framework being at the threshold of the fourth cycle of nac accreditation it is indeed a great help for devamada college korvalangat and for all the participating institutions at large in order to secure a high grade in the coming accreditation exercise thank you ma'am for accepting our invitation I take this opportunity to congratulate the team IQAC led by Mr Anish Thomas the IQAC coordinator convener of this seminar and the head of the department of commerce for making this event possible today The highlight of this seminar is none other than our esteemed resource persons we are fortunate enough to have the experienced speakers in the chosen areas for the technical sessions Dr Tony Thomas the coordinator of this seminar deserves full credit for ensuring the presence of these stalwarts for enriching the various sessions i remember with gratitude the support of our manager the vice principal the bursa and all the members of the devamada family in materializing this next concept national seminar i hope this seminar will give you very effective and fruitful days with striking experience and live discussions and deliberations thank you thank you sir it's a great honor to have with us today dr lena govind gehane deputy advisor of nac bengaluru as our chief guest a physics professor with rich academic credentials vast experience and research contributions dr lena is a multifaceted personality a renowned speaker who has delivered more than 800 lectures noted freelance writer with more than 1000 articles or poems to her credit an enthusiastic hr trainer member of professional bodies a passionate social worker the list is never ending ma'am we are humbled with your graceful presence and warmly heartedly invite you for the inaugural address and engaging the first session on assessment and accreditation methodology in the revised accreditation framework over to you ma'am uh, thank you anup thank you very much Uh, for welcoming me, me introducing me with such a sweet voice thank you very much uh, first of all let me congratulate dev mata college uh, that they have organized the webinar on a very relevant topic 
people are been thinking of how this carpet of NEP 2020 uh, will be unfolded. What and all the structuring, restructuring of various responsibilities uh, will be. So in this context, organizing a webinar on the topic assessment and accreditation in light of NEP 2020, uh, in fact, is most wanted topic. Uh, so I first of all congratulate the institution. Uh, honorable principal to the institution, uh, Dr. Sunil Matthews, then IQAC coordinator Anish Thomas G, and a contact person who was after me uh, through mail and coordinator of this uh, program, uh, Dr. Thomas, Tony Thomas, and all other resource persons and uh, dear participants. After almost 35 years, uh, there is a thought of transformation to be uh, to make the education higher education to be more relevant with a Bharatiya ethos to highlight showcase our past to encourage our present and to make our future very much what you can say sustainable as well as making our nation to reach uh, what you know standards global standards uh, in the arena of uh, academia is the ethos or is the objective of NEP 2020. Rightly pointed in detail by Sunil Matthews G, ki higher education council will be the you know main body under which there will be various verticals and depending upon their scope to regularize, uh, regulate, uh, you know, forming rules and uh, implementation uh, of their, uh, what you can say, what and all uh, they are meant for, uh, that regulation will definitely simplify and uh, make the overall education system more uh, user friendly. Because unless and until it is been done, uh, the things won't uh, happen to the extent we are expecting. So making the ease to the approach as well as regulation is the objective of uh, NEP. And so also uh, NEP highlights on uh, uh, catering to the needs of what exactly the local uh, students or the local institutions they want. So uh, it encompasses uh, all the requirements uh, of what you can say, uh, the as, uh, as well as aspirations of the students uh, who will be uh, taking up higher education. Uh, we will uh, know far, far many things as uh, there are various sessions on academic bank of credits and the skills and other things uh, in coming two days. Uh, so let me start with the session for which I am being, uh, you know, invited for. And I will share my slide. And uh, Dr. Thomas was worried. So I declare that uh, the seminar is inaugurated. Let me seek blessings from Bharat Mata. Uttaram yat samudrascha himadrish chayva dakshanam varsham tad bharatam namam bharati yatra samskuti vande bharat mataram. Uh, I, I uh, congratulate you for Azadika Amrut Mahatsa. Uh, this, is, this has not uh, came in a year or a two. Thousand of years of what you can say Sangharshaka itihas raha hai. So I owe to, I, 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 I uh, respect as well as I, uh, uh, I bow my head uh, for all those Kartavya Samarpan and Balidan. Uh, so I congratulate you that we are celebrating Azadika Amrit Mahatsa. Uh, I hope, uh, Anup, I should continue with my technical session now. Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Or uh, is there any formality? No, no. Yeah. Nothing, ma'am. Please. Proceed. So the purpose for which I had, I had been invited is to give an overview of assessment and accreditation. I know Devamata College is in its fourth cycle of assessment and accreditation, but when I inquired to who and all will be the participant, I was I were info I was informed that uh, ki another uh, uh, college institutions uh, participants will be present in this particular webinar. So I thought of giving an overview of a and a process. I shall discuss on how to prepare SSR, what and all should be the focus points. So in my short journey, I will try to uh, 
seek your attention to how this DBV process happens. And friends, since uh, NEP 2020 talks of the ease of the process, NAC has came out with uh, the provisional accreditation for colleges manual. And I shall uh, give some insight to how this provisional accreditation is intended and how it will be happening, what and all will be the application about and documents to be submitted. Uh, as you know, uh, NAC has been working for past more than two decades uh, with a vision to make quality the defining element of higher education in Pan-India. But it is not just a process that uh, institutions are required to submit the document. And we at NAC will just uh, scrutiny the, do the scrutiny to the document and declare results. It's not like that. So it is through the combination of self and external quality evaluation. So uh, NAC expects the institution to be, you know, uh, holding a hand along with us to make this quality journey to be more, what you can say, successful and more meaningful. So it is a combination of self and external quality evaluation, as you are aware of. Uh, in a revised accreditation framework, institutions are required to submit their self-study report. So preparation of self-study report is nothing but a self-evaluation. And NAC believes that, ki, you know, rather than external evaluation, uh, self-evaluation is more appropriate. And definitely the institutions who, who and all <coughs> or the members of the institution who and all uh, are making this SSR uh, or involved in this ANA process as such whole institution is involved, including the students and other people also, but especially the focus is to IQAC uh, who had been, you know, uh, calling for all the documents, keeping the records and other things. So they are accountable for that. So that uh, sense of accountability and responsibility will definitely uh, enhance the quality culture of the institution. So uh, to make the quality the defining element, it has to be through the combination of self and external quality evaluation. We being NAC, we are the quali external quality evaluation agency. And you being an institution, you are self-evaluating uh, what and all are there. Then we promote the quality initiatives, as you are aware of, uh, in between, I think a, a, a year back, we had conducted the best practices webinars, isn't it? And we, uh, you know, uh, contacted all A double plus institution across our nation. And we requested them to make a presentation on what and all are the best practices which are initiated by the institution. So through such presentations, we may motivate, encourage the institution. Uh, we promote their, you know, good deeds uh, in the form of various activities and the sustenance initiatives. So if you look into these two, three words, we find that it is such a broad spectrum and it is not a day or two that we will reach uh, to the institutions. Uh, but yes, of course, may the uh, vision be very broader. We had very focused step and climbing one by one steps, uh, we are reaching out to the institution. So the mission statement of the NAC, it uh, gives us an insight how we are moving with assessment and accreditation process. So to arrange periodic assessment and accreditation of the institution to higher education is our first responsibility. Then to stimulate the academic environment for the promotion of quality of teaching, learning and research in higher education institution. Friends, Whenever the institution is in the process of assessment and accreditation, so definitely uh, the, there is an inner view, or you can say we look inside what and all our initiatives are, activities are, are they really improving the academic environment of the institution? Are our teaching learning processes really effective so that whatever are the, you know, attainments we are uh, uh, expecting for the student to achieve in, in terms of the syllabus or the knowledge. Are we really reaching that particular stage? And are our faculties been inspired to take up a research? Do we have a project fund, fundings? Are there any MOUs? All these aspects, the stimulus is given when the institution enters into assessment and accreditation process. Third is to encourage self-evaluation, accountability, autonomy, and innovations in higher education. 
I have, uh, you know, uh, talked much on the self-evaluation and uh, uh, accountability. But, you know, whenever the institution is given an autonomy, then definitely all the kalpanas, ideas, uh, they, they get flowered. And institutions, uh, you know, design their own uh, practices, initiatives, programs, and new, new innovations they are getting staged. So that is how we just provide a stimulus of encouragement and the institution fly uh, with their own idea wings. That is all expected in this. <clears throat> then undertake quality related research studies, consultancies and training program. We at NAC, we are also involved in the you know research. Uh, and we encourage the institution also to take up a research. We also, uh, you, if you look into the various metrics of uh, our re uh, revised accreditation framework criteria wise, we are asking whether the institution is involved in a consultancy. The area in which the institution is having an expertise, that particular exp expertise should be beneficial to the society or to the other uh, educational institutions or the industry. So also we do take training programs. We request the institution to take various training programs uh, so that the skills are being acquired by the stakeholders. Then collaborate with the stakeholders of higher education for quality evaluation, promotion and sustenance. One of the particular, uh, uh, one of the activity of collaboration is uh, today's webinar that we are uh, together here and we shall be having a monthan on various topics of NEP uh, so that uh, we, we will get some idea how exactly uh, this umbrella of NEP will, you know, uh, benefit us and how the structure uh, will come out as. Now, whenever we design any, uh, what you can say, a vision, we design our steps to reach that particular vision, definitely there has to have the, some core values. So if you look into NAC's uh, core values to reach that quality, the defining element, goal, then there are five core values. Contribution to the national development. What and all are the uh, institutions' activities which help uh, the student engage in national development? Such metrics are in, uh, uh, you know, included in our revised framework. Then fostering the global competencies among students. Friends, unless and, our, unless, unless and until our students, faculties, they are uh, not updated, upgraded uh, with the, what you can say, the requirements of the present challenges. Then those challenges will remain challenges forever. They won't be converted into opportunities, isn't it? So fostering to the global competencies among students, how the institution is looking into, how they are <clears throat> equipping their students to face the challenges. Inculcating value system among students. We live in a diverse, integrated society, isn't it? So a day long and a day out, we need to uh, deal with many, many people, their swabhav, you know? and accordingly, we, get, we need to get adjusted with the groups. So it is uh, very much important that our students should learn the group dynamics. <clears throat> so how through various activities, institution is motivating uh, and, uh, you know, imbibing in the students the various value systems, promoting use of technology. Technology is a boon. That is how I sitting in uh, Bangalore is able to communicate to you. And you also know that uh, NAC has the whole communication through ICT only. So we expect that our institution should use the technology by and large and they should showcase all their activities to the society and reach global uh, through their website and posting various events, uh, you know, uh, conducted in the institution on the website. Then quest for excellence. If I say, oh, I'm an institution, I'm in third cycle, I have, you know, uh, got A plus grade. And uh, being just an A plus grade and keeping happy uh, will not serve the purpose. If I am A plus, now can I be an institution with potential for excellence? Can I have that special centers, centers of excellence, uh, various of the various departments in the institution? Can I have an offshore campus? 
so and this is until we have that desire to grow and uh, uh, you know uh, and make uh, our uh, quality culture available uh, or I, i can say an outsource the quality culture of our institution uh, through the easy uh, approach and um, that is uh, being an uh, educational institution that is our responsibility so quest for excellence is the fifth core value why i am getting into much more detail and uh, seeking your attention to the vision mission and the core values because we find that all these deliberations will definitely uh, ignite some of the ideas within you to take up one of the things as a best practices of the uh, institution or to make your this uh, institution to be institution with some dis- distinctiveness uh, so that is why uh, i have taken it uh, uh, in uh, in depth the overall focus of assessment is the quality culture of the institution and then uh, uh, institutions quality initiative sustenance and quality enhancement uh, and we expect that whatever uh, practices are been adopted by the institution the institution's vision and mission uh, it will be mapping map, map it should map with the with that ye to vision kuch aur hai क्वालिटी इनिशिएटिव्स uh, कुछ और हैं और वहाँ कोलैबोरेशन कुछ नहीं है अगर हम आफ्टर वन ईयर इफ यू लुक इन टू कि वेर वी रीच एज अ इंस्टीट्यूशन देन वी आर नॉट एबल टू टेल कि हाँ वी हैव रीच अप टू दिस पर्टिकुलर यू नो लैंडमार्क सो इट इज़ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट अवर विजन मिशन शुड रिफ्लेक्ट इन आवर पॉलिसीज आवर प्रोसेस आवर वेज ऑफ ऑपरेशन सो नैक इंस्पायर्स द इंस्टीट्यूशन Uh, for that and i have already uh, got into the detail that nak expect that quality journey is not a possible going alone hai na mai akela hi chalta raha magar log judte gaye aur karwa banta gaya so unless and until we have the people hand holding with the people making all the uh, higher education uh, to get focus to the quality uh, uh, academics Im- uh, imparting education is not possible so that is how it is a collaborative uh, uh, work uh, and we involve our institution uh, not only the faculty but the students our alumni uh, then the community people then the industries then ngos if you look into various uh, parameters of uh, our uh, nac uh, various metrics key indicators definitely we can uh, understand that Uh, you are well aware of assessment is a performance evaluation of course and this particular performance evaluation is based on certain established criteria and accreditation is not just for uh, a year but uh, it is uh, valid for the fixed period and in case of nac it is for 5 years and as you reach into the higher cycles having a good grade uh, like a plus or a double plus then definitely the years of uh, you know um, uh, accreditation period uh, it it will get increased so this is a ladder uh, by which you can climb step by step and reach the goal of accreditation the very basic thing is required is that the institution has to create its uh, hei portal uh, on on the nag portal so that all the information related to assessment and accreditation will be available uh, on the institution portal uh, about the nax a and a process so the first thing is the registration to the portal second thing is about the iiqa submission third one is about the ssr preparation and its submission and after that uh, there will be what you can say the Uh, interaction virtual like interaction uh, not by uh, you know audio interaction but a words interaction we call it as a dvv uh, and simultaneously the triple s will occur once the institution it gets pre qualified uh, then after that the institution is ready for the on site or the peer team and the final grade or the accreditation would be available the same ladder i have shown through the flow chart uh you all are aware it is very much available in our manual as well i won't go in the details these are the timelines you can see here once iiq has been submitted and accepted within the 30 to 45 days the institution has to submit <coughs> ssr 
after a, a month's time, the DBB process as well as the student satisfaction survey, uh, it will get over. Friends, you might be thinking that these timelines were okay earlier before Corona. We find that there were many applications, requests from the institution that, you know, the staffs are not available, activities are not been done. So these are timelines uh, on the request of the institution. They are some, what you can say, to some extent we have dilated. And on the request, now we are giving a week's time, week, uh, one week time, more time for the institution to submit their SSR, but only on the request. And within 90 days, we were uh, we are expecting the peer team visit to happen. But still, there are many challenges for the assessors to go on field. So NAC has come out with the hybrid type of what you can say peer team visit, in which the chairman and member coordinator, they will be visiting actually to the site and the member uh, who is in the group can join online. So that hybrid model of peer team visit we have come across and uh, we have implemented it and it is uh, working very successfully. So this is how the whole timeline works with whenever we called it as A and A process. So uh, the uh, like uh, the overall A and A process, it is ICT enabled, it is more objective, transparent and it is scalable. Uh, earlier, before a revised accreditation uh, framework was, there was a peer qualitative judgment. Now we are finding that there is nearly 70% <clears throat> quantitative metrics and 30% are the qualitative metrics. Uh, so now the scope of an institution to submit the data, the quantitative data, which will reflect the quality academic culture of the institution, Along with the supporting documents, it has given a more weightage. Uh, it is uh, ICT enabled. There are reduction in number of questions. Then there are the benchmark uh, uh, as a quality improvement tool. And friends, this is benchmark are, are not created just uh, with an imagination that it will be four. There was a pilot survey done. And depending upon the observations, these benchmarks, they were designed. And depending upon the performance of the institution, uh, the scores are being generated, how they are generated, I will uh, come in my next slide. Then there is a pre-qualification. Any institution scoring 25%, uh, then the institution in a, in a quantitative uh, matrix, uh, it is uh, pre-qualified to uh, get into the peer team visit. The DVV is a third-party validation wherein the quantitative metrics along with your supporting documents, uh, they are being evaluated and accordingly the, what you can say, and uh, the data it is being considered. Then the revising several metrics is happening. We are under revision. We take a consultation with our stakeholders. We try to, you know, give them idea about how exactly uh, the INAC is moving on depending upon the responses or the reflections of our stakeholder, we revise many things. So this is how NAC is a very communicative organization. And here, uh, the handholding uh, with the institution is uh, our nature. So who and all are eligible? Any institution with two batches of graduations or six years of existence, they are applicable to uh, uh, get into this a, &A process then uh, they should have all uh, relevant documents like ISHA, SRA, affiliation certificates. Uh, so it should be in the name of institution and it should be of the recent year. Uh, then the registration on NAC portal, I have already informed. So if this is the thing done by the institution, then institution is eligible to apply for a and &A process. If you look into all the seven criteria on which this quality indicator framework is based, then you will know that these criteria are designed in such a way, or I can say the key indicators, the metrics, they are designed in such a way that if institution is taking up the things very seriously, then definitely quality will be the defining element of that particular institution. So we are looking into the curricular aspects, how the teaching, learning and evaluation process is progressing in the institution, how the research and innovation and extension programs are there in the institution, whether the institution is promoting research culture, 
are there the phd uh, holders uh, as a teaching faculty to the in institution is there a incubation center or the uh, you know the, the, some uh, uh, some of the projects uh, they are been filed to have a patent so all these uh, research activities <coughs> are promoted in our criteria number 3 then infrastructure and learning resources it's very much important that um, if there is a good infrastructure good resources available to the uh, student or the overall ambience of the uh, you know uh, institution is good then definitely the inspiration to learn uh, increases uh, so we need to make the student self learning that is what is uh, nep uh, highlighting on it is student centric uh, process the whole education system should be student centric then student support and progression how the institution is supporting student to go to the higher studies what and all other the what you can say the scholarship and other benefits are there to the uh, students then governance leadership and management unless and until there is a you know very uh, uh, challenging as well as promising leadership the institution may uh, cannot grow and uh, to have that you know uh, promising uh, uh, goals as well as vision to take the institution forward the governance as well as management has to support the uh, things isn't it so how this is happening we are looking into the sixth criteria and of course the institutional values and best practices here the institution uh, is given a full autonomy to showcase what and all are uh, the initiatives taken up to prove their institution for them only uh, to be the best institution so what and all are the best practices this is uh, you know at a glance uh, how many uh, key indicators are there what and all are the qualitative metrics and quantitative metrics uh, this is chart available in the <clears throat> manual the overall assessment process is carried out at three uh, stages the first stage is preparation of our ssr which happen in the institution second party who is playing important role to this ana process is our students uh, they will be participating they will be uh, reflecting on the teaching learning as well as overall academic environment of the students through the feedback we call it as a student satisfaction survey and the third one we, third will be the peer team visit wherein the peers will be coming to the institution to verify and validate what and all are uh, the you know uh, claims of the institution related to qualitative metrics so this is the important thing and each each one at their own side has to play an important role now a question comes to our mind why to do this all why to get into the assessment and accreditation we are the institution we had been there for a long time why I, we should go for assessment and accreditation first of all the institution will know their strength weaknesses and opportunities through a inform review process if the institution is coming in assessment and accreditation then it can identify the internal areas of planning and resource allocation because whenever the accreditation outcome document will come that time in black and white the institution can know what and all are their strength where they need to give more attention in the uh, in what and all are the weaknesses so accordingly the planning of the budget uh, budget planning will be there and the resources will be uh, uh, allocated then institution can collegiate in on the campus this is also a big opportunity that the various departments coming together having the collaborative multidisciplinary approach and the activities it can be seen by the funding agencies if the institution is accredited then only uh, the government funding will come to the institution then institution can initiate innovative and modern methods of pedagogy direction and new identity will be uh, uh, new sense of identity identity will be gained by the institution so also if uh, the institution is having some grade then definitely the society will also look for that ye acha college hai ha yahan par padhai likhai achhi hoti hai waise hi regarding the placements the industries or others uh, who wanted to pick up your students 
दे विल थिंक कि अच्छा ग्रेड का इंस्टीट्यूशन है तो डेफिनेटली इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर अच्छा होगा अच्छे स्किल स्टूडेंट में आए होंगे इस तरह से एंड सो ऑल्सो देर विल बी द विंडो ओपन टू हैव द इंटर एंड इंट्रा इंस्टीट्यूशनल इंटरक्शन वेर इन वी कैन हैव द कोलेब्रेशन विद अदर एजुकेशनल इंस्टीट्यूशन फॉर सम रिसोर्सेस और सम इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर so these are all are the benefits of accreditation so i request uh, all of you if you have not uh, came into this ana process so definitely enter into the process and know where we stand as an educational institution for that the very basic thing or the first thing is to you have to uh, apply for it and we call that application as institutional information for quality assessment wherein all the preliminary information about the institution is asked it is just an application so once the institution is eligible then iiqa they have to uh, submit along with the fees which is applicable as per uh, it is given in the manual and once the iiqa is through then the institution is ready for what you can say the to to submit the ssr all this process will happen only through the portal so online portal registration is very very important so you have to create your own institutional account uh, in the nac and uh, through that account only uh, the whole a and a process will uh, will be uh, regulated Uh, so you have to go to the nac website you have to click on apply online you have to fill in all the details and then you will be uh, entering into email address as well as your password and then you will be getting it as a new uh, registration and you will get an uh, you know your own uh, account in the nac so i will not get into much more details we have lot of webinars we have hosted on the nac website as well as on youtube uh, specifically uh, in focus to iiqa and other things this is just a slide i am scrolling at a glance uh, that you should have all your sra documents you should have the approval of ugc mhrd state government for establishment if you are an university then affiliation letters has to be with you and other leke jao ye and other documents as well like your uh, iisc certificate you should have if there is a change in name of the institution that particular change in name should be approved by the university or if the institution is covered with the statutory regulating authority should have that approval stand alone institution should submit the equivalent certificate from uh, aiu or any other government agencies so all these documents if you are ready with then definitely you are um, Uh, eligible to submit your iiqa if it is a second cycle institution then definitely for those institution from the previous cycle to the new application all previous aqars uh, they are to be submitted uh, annual quality assurance reports each year institution has to submit so so if institution having the 2a for 12b they have to submit that document also along with the iiqa fee they can submit there can be two possibilities the iiqa if it is accepted then definitely you will be going into ssr if it is been rejected then institution has got two more chances in the same year with the same fees to apply again so that has to be uh, kept in mind uh, whenever you get into some uh, some sort of rejection or so so this is all uh, overall iiqa application process uh you can see it it is at glance what i talk it is uh, made on the flow chart as a process i will come now to uh, once the iiqa application is uh, accepted then the institution has to prepare the self study report uh self study report is nothing but uh, what i can say the document which will uh, which will be uh, uh, reflecting the complete process what is the input how and all are the processes and how exactly is the outcome uh, or the output of that perform uh, of the performance of the institution so it has to be done online once the ssr is been submitted then there, there will be data verification and validation then there will be the student satisfaction survey simultaneously occurring and then will be peer team and the result or the declaration of the grades uh, ssr to be submitted online along with the supporting documents then whenever we uh, look into our ssr 
if you look into the SSR, then there are the metrics, we call it as a quantitative metrics as well as qualitative metrics. Especially for the quantitative metrics, quantitative data, numeric data has to be filled along with the supporting documents. So friends, many a times we find that institution are not knowing what document to be submitted. For that, we have hosted the standard operating procedure on the NAC website. So we need to refer to the NAC website also. And uh, on the website, relevant to your uh, manual, if you are university, you need to look into the university standard operating procedure. So we have provided what documents you need to submit and what not to be submitted. Okay, so uh, that is an uh, important thing kept in mind. Secondly, for an institution to have all the data documents related to NAC available to the public or for our own access, institution can create one NAC tab on the website wherein all NAC related documents would be hosted. So once the IIQA has been accepted, institution will get a confirmation message uh, on the portal and uh, they will uh, it will be reflected on their portal like IIQA approved. Once this bail goes green, that means the institution has to get ready with the SSR. SSR is compiled of uh, nine dimensions. The first is the profile of the institution. Second is the extended profile of the institution wherein the general data, the overall data of the institution has to be provided. Then comes a quality indicator framework, which consists of the quantitative metrics, data templates, and the documents. Also the qualitative metrics, which are to be responded in terms of text. Then the executive summary for each of the criteria institution has to write. We have given an option to the institution because looking into the diversity of the institution, many uh, sometimes some of the metrics are not applicable. So in that case, the institution can opt out that metrics and uh, by their choice, they can uh, uh, select which and all to be responded. And along with the submission of SSR, institution has to pay the first installment of ANA process uh, other than IIQA application. Then student details are to be provided for survey and the SSR to be submitted. So these are the uh, nine dimension on which complete SSR uh, it is. Uh, it will be made ready uh, and it will be submitted to NAC. I have already uh, told you that relevant supporting documents, it will be available in the standard operating procedure. It will act as a guide to you what and all to be submitted. Friends, since it is all the ICT enabled, the size of the document has a limit. So kindly concise your uh, all documents to the size of 5 MB so that it will uh, it will be very uh, easily uploaded. So SSR submission readiness can be seen on this slide. Profile of the institution, basic information, communication ke liye contact details, status of the institution hai, academic programs ke baare mein jankari denge, then position details of the faculty, qualification of teaching staff, details of student enrollment, location, all these preliminary information, it will be included into the profile of the institution. And if you look into your HEI portal, here are various uh, uh, tabs. So basic information, then academic information and evaluative report of the department. So accordingly, what an information you are filling, if you see the left pane in this, you have to go to the manage SSR, the first will profile of the SSR, then extended profile, then executive summary, selection of optional metrics, initial payment. So all these things, one by one, you can tab and accordingly the instructions as well as the information, instructions to be followed and information to be produced. So extended profile mein kya rahega? The program details, kitne course, kitne program hai. Students ke baare mein jankari hum isme denge ki kitni seats hai as per government rule reserved category ke liye. Total student kitne hai, final year student kitne hai. Phir academic mein full time teachers kitne hai, kitni sanction post hai total number of classrooms. So uh, these will be uh, the extended profile questions. And in when you click this, this description box will come and one by one year wise somewhere and somewhere consolidated information, 
somewhere current academic information will be provided. Uh, can you tell me how much time I've been allotted? Somebody will respond. Ma'am, you have time, ma'am. Till 11 o'clock, you have time. But we have a break till 11.30. So it's absolutely fine, even if you extend your thoda time. Sa, thoda yeah. aage jayega, uh, will it be okay if I get into such a details or otherwise I can scroll and I can run first? Please uh, give me input. Uh, it is fine, ma'am. Please okay, carry on. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so I, I, I told you about the standard operating procedure. So the, it, it is this. Metric ka number hai, metric details hai, documents required, specific instructions to HEI. Friends, before you enter into this ANA process, what I suggest is, first of all, read the manual. Accordingly, then look into the standard operating procedure, get ready with all the documents so that you won't be in trouble. Ki, are, hamare paas to ye document hai hi nahi. Or we have not uh, this, uh, these things recorded. Many a times, no activities we have done. And we have not called for the photographer. And we are in trouble whenever we are filling up our SSR. Oh, we don't have the photographs to be produced. But at that time, some of the people, they, through their mobile, they have already taken up a screen uh, photographs. So if you look into the standard operating procedures, criteria-wise, then definitely all documents you can align first. And then if you come for a and a process, it will be fine. So extended profile, friends, is very, very, very important. One mistake in extended profile can have the variation in the value cal final value calculation to so many metrics. For an example, I tell you, if we uh, are looking for 1.1 number of programs offered by the institution for last five years. This particular metric, it has a reflection, direct impact on the two metrics of the QIF. So one mistake made in data will definitely have some variation in the value of two metrics. If you look into number of student year-wise for last five years, no, in that case, this particular extended profile metric has direct impact on nine metric level or uh, QIF values. If you look into number of full-time teachers, it has an impact of 11 metrics. So one mistake doing will definitely hamper the calculations in the uh, quality indicator framework, or you can say the quality uh, criteria-wise, the metrics and key indicators and um, are quantitative and qualitative metrics are there. No? It will have an impact on that. So we have to be very focused and, you know, particular while filling up our extended profile, and all information should be correct so that it won't hamper the calculation because this extended profile values, they will come in the denominator of the uh, wherein the formula based calculations have been done. So that has to be kept in mind so that there should not be any mistake when we enter the data for uh, extended profile. So this is our quality indicator framework. I have already uh, told you that there are seven criteria, and these seven criteria are just like a pancha mahabhuta. And uh, we require uh, air, water, fire, everything to grow. Each one of us requires. Similarly, for an institution to grow, all these seven criteria, they will play an important role, which will be divided into various key indicators. Down the line, they are divided into quantitative as well as qualitative metrics. So basically, the self-study report comprises of the student satisfaction survey. For that, you have to provide the information about the student details on campus, then qualitative metric and the quantitative metrics. When this is being filled very correctly, that will be only what you can say the success for an institution. So self-study report preparation is success uh, for the institution to get uh, qualified and get accredited. Quantitative metrics, if you look into, they are the direct derivatives. I just now told you that some will be asking for just a number. For an example, number of add-on or certificate programs, if you mention it 10, it is direct derivative. It is asking for direct information. Extended profile, I told you not to make a mistake. See, this particular metrics, percentage of student undertaking project field work, Number of student undertaking project word and how many number of total number of students uh, who are in the campus. So if you make a mistake in total number of students, definitely this particular value, it will get changed. So this is called as a formula-based quantitative metrics. 
then there is a option based uh, quantitative matrix all the above any one of the above like that then there are certain matrix which are dependent upon the time slot like some of the matrix they are asking the information year wise average enrollment percentage average of last five years so we are asking for year wise data and then then we are making it average see here in this particular table 18 19 we are asking data so you will be filling up all the data and then the average will be taken up so there are time slots uh, somewhere we are asking for average somewhere we are asking for last five years actual information and somewhere we are asking for latest completed academic year so we have to be very clear uh, while looking into various metrics and the intent of the metrics see again we have provided with the guide that we call it as a glossary it is also available on the nac website and you need to look uh, into the glossary for knowing the meaning of the various terms uh, so it will help you out to understand in far better way what nac uh, how nac defines the various terms over here and of course qualitative matrix it is nothing but a descriptive statement wherein um, the quality can be expressed Uh, so you have to uh, write about what is the question asked because depending upon your description the peer members are going to uh, you know validate uh, the information on site when they visit your institution now the uh, responses will be uh, converted into score for an example the institution has given some response as you are aware of ours is a likert type of scale and from 0 to 4 we have uh, distributed uh, or it is a 0 to 4 scale for an example for a particular metric the weightage is 20 okay but depending upon the response of the institution it is matching to the benchmark of 3 okay you have provided some document and uh, as per the benchmarking whatever response you have given it is matching to the value 3 then the total weightage and the benchmark value the final score will be 60 for an example the institution's response is maximum which may be uh, you know lined up to the benchmark of 4 so in that case the value of the institution final score of that particular matrix to the institution will be 4 into 20 that is 80 so this is how whatever data you are been providing uh, and the benchmarks which are been set for various uh, metrics uh, accordingly the scores will be generated so for qnm requirement there is a metric input then there will be a data template supporting documents all these three they will be compiling the total uh, what you can say information to the qnm then comes a data uh, verification and validation process i have already shown you uh, how the standing operating procedures will help you to calculate the things ah yeah before i enter into dvv uh, you have to write a executive summary that means you have to put in your own words uh, 250 words the criteria wise summary uh, how the institution is performing in that particular criteria you have to give the introductory note also so also in in brief you have to write about the strength weaknesses opportunities and challenges of the institution any additional information if you wanted to give you can give in the executive summary and overall conclu uh, conclusive uh, explanation the executive summary will not be uh, more than 5000 words that you need to look into but this is important wherein the institution has given the chance to express their own uh, performance in their own words uh, then i told you that there are the optional metrics the criteria 1 2 and 7 are essential of course in 3 4 5 6 you can have an option uh, remember that uh, the maximum weightage of matrix that can be opted out will be 30 and uh, the metric with maximum total of 10 weightage per criteria can be opted out so if uh, now if you have chosen for some matrix and their total score comes out to be 15 so that is not permissible so uh, matrix with maximum of 10 weightage uh, per criteria can be opted out so these are some of the you know rules uh, for optional matrix and institution has to look into i will not go into the payment and other things uh, 
okay support okay i will just now focus on how the dvv occurs dvv is a third party validation verification and as the institution submits the ssr then this ssr uh, uh, is allotted to uh, dvv partners wherein they go through the ssr and uh, they make their uh, you know clarification they ask for the clarification uh, looking into your ssr uh, remember that clarification will be raised only for the quantitative metrics because whatever uh, documents as well as data institution has provided while submitting ssr uh, there might be some discrepancy for that the dvv may raise the clarification and there will be 15 days time for the institution to clarify the doubts which are been asked by the dvv through portal only so uh, once the uh, hii respond to the various clarification after that again the dvv will look into whether uh, the correct clarification as per standard operating procedure uh, is provided by the institution or not and then they will uh, submit the final report to the nac so this is how the total dvv process uh, happens you can look into first allocation first day were seven days it will be the study by dvv partner 15 days will be the time wherein the window will open again for the institution to submit their claims post uh, clarification seven days time will be taken up by dvv to consolidate the report and submit it to nac so over all this again a months process is there uh, i will not uh, get into the uh, details of this but yes of course uh, whenever the dvv uh, it is uh, uh taking up uh, they will also refer to the standard operating procedure so remember that our documents has to be as per sop uh, so, uh, because clarification for an example percentage of new courses introduced uh, out of our total courses across all programs offered during the last 5 years so if institution has not provided the list of new courses introduced definitely the dvb partner will ask for this document so uh remember that the clarification raised by the dvv partners uh, it should be as per the sop now there are various uh, what you can say stages of your dvv if whatever data is given by hei if it is acceptable then hei uh, no answer change or what we can say that uh, the data you have provided it is accepted second condition would be whatever is the clarification raised by dvv if the hei has provided correct documents okay and if dvv find that this data as well as documents is okay the dvv will write a comment hei clarification accepted matlab dvv has clarified for some of the doubts institution has provided correct documents and dvv approves it it is called as a dvv clarification accepted second point will be about if the dvv partner has raised the clarification and uh, uh, you know uh, hei has responded for it but still uh, the data has to be changed in that case we will call it as a changed after clarification so here the second stage would be the changed after clarification in few of the metrics third will be no answer change whatever you have given earlier dvv has accepted it is a no answer change and the third one will be dvv suggestion recommended in that case dvv has raised clarification hei provided the data dvv is not happy with the data dvv has calculated its own data depending upon that it has suggested some value it is called as a dvv suggestion recommended so these would be the various stages uh, of the dvv and accordingly the data uh, it will be approved it will be considered it may be reduced it can be accepted like that so this overall a and a process if you look into it will be a journey of almost 9 months but we are finding that many institution across india they are not uh, you know uh, coming for a and a process but as per the mandate from the government we wanted that all the institution should get accredited uh, and uh, you know uh, to implement uh, the nep that is one of the criterias so i told you that nac is very user friendly 
we had a consultation uh, consultation with the institution and we have come up with the provisional accreditation for colleges manual in just 5 to 10 minutes i will uh, uh, you know uh, get you to, through this uh, what is exactly the pac uh, is there so to widen the horizon of accreditation and invite more number of institution we have come with the small application we call it as a provisional accreditation uh, remember that the institutions who are coming in the graded assessment accreditation through raf process uh, they are entitled to the bigger benefits like the funding and other things provisional accreditation is a concept wherein we are inviting institution to get ready for that graded accreditation process so this is you know uh, 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 in between a small provision made uh, through the pac the objective of this particular process is to identify the colleges which are eligible to apply here we are looking for the institution which is new born and a just a one year born has completed two semester and they have the result in hand for both the semester such a institution is uh, uh, eligible to apply for pac then to provide a feedback to the applicant colleges regarding specific improvement needed for reaching the threshold level of quality if the new born institution is coming under pac for assessment accreditation definitely after review as well as getting that provisional accreditation document institution will get a, at hand a black and white feedback ki are tum kaha ja rahe ho then we are finding that there are even old institution they are very uh, they are fearing nax ana process to make them ready hand hold with them sensitize and motivate them the institution which has never came for uh, assessment accreditation those institution can also come for uh, provisional accreditation first now this is a process which ascertains readiness of the institution towards assessment and accreditation because if you look into the application it is consist of only 20 questions 10 quantitative uh, and 10 qualitative matrix Uh, so we are slowly uh, you know uh, bringing the institution of the fear getting them ready to pro uh, face the uh, you know revised accreditation framework graded uh, uh, graded process that we usually call it as a cycled accreditation so there are certain guidelines uh, this provisional accreditation it will be valid only for 2 years colleges cannot opt for pac for more than two consecutive times matlab if the institution has completed first year has applied for pac completed pac then uh, it will be applicable only for two years this pac validity is only two years after that only one time the institution can come for pac otherwise institution has to go to the uh, raf assessment accreditation process pac will not be associated with any cycles of the accreditation the accreditation fee is 10000 rupees plus uh, gst and actual logistic fees including the peer team visit if it is recommended and outcome of pac will be binary yes or no so this is nothing but making the institution ready for uh, you know uh, for the initiative uh, of uh, getting into the a and a actual process uh here the peer team will be comprises of the two members one of them may be the vc director or professor and another may be the principal of similar type of institution for an example if it is a engineering institution then definitely uh, the engineering college principal may be appointed as one of the peer team members uh, and some may be the observers from the university state government or a nac nominee the college should comply with public disclosure of all documents submitted to nac Uh, so the institutional website has to be very much functional in this particular case uh, whatever are the benefits getting to the institution in terms of various fundings and other things no so this pac uh, may not get th that type of funding uh, college which shall be provisioned with an independent ombudsman for the grievance redressal yes if there are certain gri uh, grievances it will be handled by the nag and here the pattern there in the regular assessment accreditation we have four point scale no here it is a three point scale 0 1 and 2 so the scores will be based according to but the beauty of this pac is that all the benchmarks it will be disclosed to the institution because we wanted to encourage them 
make them ready for actual assessment and accreditation process. Uh, so uh, who will be accredited in under PSC? The institution which will score uh, 15 marks out of 40 uh, will be provisionally accredited and the provisional accreditation certificate will be issued by the NAC. The college um, uh, who and all uh, is applying under PAC, the pro forma will be available. Fees paid to PAC may not be refunded, adjusted under any circumstances. So institution has to complete. So this particular application may again, there will be the basic information like a ICA name of institution, date of establishment, head con, hai, email ID, has the institution completed one academic year, type of college, kaisa hai, shift hai kya, uh, uh, by gender, boys, girls, co-education kya hai, by management added hai, unaided hai, private hai kya hai, status of college, uh, upload documents filled by the colleges, whether it is a uh, autonomous college or affiliated college or standalone institution. So the institutional basic information will be asked, along with the name of jurisdiction, konsi university se sare hai kya, Association of Indian Universities, if it is a standalone institution, with number of faculty with doctoral program, number of programs offered, list of mandatory committees, management information system, unke paas hai, kya CBS hai, kya undertaking. So all these are the preliminary details. So the quantitative questions are like this, you can look into. And on the right side of this, uh, there are the scores which has, uh, you know, given the benchmark also disclosed. So percentage of teacher against sanction post, if it is less than 50, then the score will be zero. If it is between the 50 to 75 percent, then it will be one. And if it is greater than 75 percent, definitely the scores will be two. Then student teacher ratio. If it is less than 50 is to 1, the score will be 0. If it is within the range, this range, and if it is greater than, what you can say, uh, less than 30 is to 1, then definitely the scores will be 2. So this is how the questions in the quantity to matrix, they are based on percentage of student undertaking project, past percentage of student, research papers, books, chapters, conferences, proceeding, student-teacher ratio, percentage of classroom with ICT, internet facility, number of curricular, co-curricular activities, number of FDP. So there will be the 10 questions, uh, quantitative metrics, and here will be the benchmark disclosed. So here there is a guideline to the institution to what extent they have to perform so that they will be, you know, uh, getting mapped to some of the benchmark values which are showed in the table. Then there will be the qualitative questions. Of course, the qualitative question, the description should be minimum to 100 words. Uh, for each of the question, again, there are 10 such questions. How the college assesses learning levels of the student after submission and organizes special program? What are the student-centric methods? How they are applying the experiential learning, part participative learning, problem solving? Specify the ICT-enabled facilities. Mention extension activities. Describe the facilities for teaching learning. Elaborate the library facilities. How college reflects academic administrative uh, pursuits in align with vision mission, how college effectively reflects leadership in various practices like decentralization and participative management, institutional development plan, quality initiatives by internal quality assurance system by the college. So these are the 10 questions available in the qualitative metrics. Friends, I am running, I know, but this particular PSC application, it is uploaded on the NACS website. You can go through it and uh, you can understand uh, the process and uh, you can apply for. What I wanted to convey through this particular webinar that uh, many a times on hearing, uh, we try to assess the things, we try to understand the things. But we believe, we not believe that rather than just running with the ignorance and, you know, uh, just hearing from here and there, rather we should look into what you can say, the correct documents. We know this Panchatantra story, how this rabbit, uh, he has made the whole jungle run just by his fear that one leaf fall on him when he was sleeping. Nobody inquired what has happened, why are you running? He was shouting and running, people started running. So I think that rather than running with ignorance, read, understand, discuss and be knowledgeable. What and all is the information required for any sort of related to assessment and accreditation process, 
it is hosted on mac website it is very user friendly uh, you know uh, website so all information is available see before assessment and accreditation may be a provisional accreditation the institution will get aligned with all the documents and information once it is what you can say uh, completing the assessment and accreditation process so uh, getting into uh, the assessment and accreditation process definitely uh, will inspire the institution uh, will uh, initiate the quality uh, processes in the institution the discussion will happen a new vision will be gained by the institution if they are coming under the umbrella of assessment and accreditation i think that is the spirit of nep as well to make quality uh, to not just to for the sake of getting grades rather institutionalization of the quality culture uh, and you know uh, there has to be uh, the uh, quality aspect in everybody's life as well the, uh, I, so uh, that is how i wanted to give an overview on ana process thank you dev mata college for inviting me and thank you participants for listening to me uh, if there are some questions we can take the questions in another 5 to 5 minutes and then i will exit if there is a provision for questions then only yeah. Ma'am, there is a question in chat box. What is the time frame for IIQA submission? Like whether there is a limit that IIQA should be submitted six months before the expiry of previous accreditation? Yeah, Thomas, uh, very true. The question is very relevant. If the institution has accredited for first cycle and now is it is entering into second cycle. so before the expiry of our previous accreditation certificate time during 6 months institution has to get ready for the next cycle why i tell you because if you look into total ana process it is almost 6 uh, to 7 months definitely okay so in if the institution is into the process before it gets an expiry of the previous cycle the cycle accreditation status will continue till the next certificate is uh, uh with the institution if institution is applying after the expiry of the cycle then for 6 to 7 months in between there will be the no accreditation status of the institution so that is the benefit between coming earlier and coming after the expiry so it's better to enter into the process before you you know uh, uh, get uh, expired with what is your validity for accreditation that is a spirit behind that yes thomas yes ma'am thank you so much ma'am for the immensely insightful session which surely has imparted a revamped sense of direction to the iqc team especially so to extend our heartfelt gratitude on behalf of the iqc team i cordially invite dr tina sebastian the smart joint coordinator of iqc over to you tina ma'am thank you anu ma'am respected principal dr sunil c matthew honorable chief guest dr leena gahani deputy advisor nac vice principal father dinoy kavlamakal barsar father joyal pandara parambil iqc coordinator and convener of the event mr anish thomas chief coordinator of the program dr tony thomas other dignitaries resource persons participants colleagues and students nep 2020 proposes to bring about a radical change in the existing education system of the country assessment and accreditation revamp the course and exam structures multidisciplinary institutions enhanced emphasis on vocational courses and digitization of education are addressed in this policy for the past 3 decades no significant changes were carried out in the indian education system and hence the academia remains to some extent apprehensive about the change but opportunity is a haughty goddess 
who waste no time with those who are unprepared now is the time for those institution who adapt to the changes quickly and adaptly will metamorphose while those resisting them will be left behind it is in this light that the present seminar which gives us opportunity to hear and interact with the experts of the field holds significance with these words let me proceed to the duty entrusted to me i deem it a great privilege to be given this opportunity to propose the word of thanks for this session i i express our earnest gratitude uh, to uh, on behalf of devamata and its team iqac to our chief guest dr leena gahani for kindly accepting our humble invitation for inaugurating this nac sponsored online national seminar and giving us an enlightening talk on assessment and accreditation methodology in the revised accreditation framework your point is to align best practices in line with the vision and mission and extensive review about the present nac accreditation process and the different steps to be followed was indeed very informative thank you ma'am with immense pleasure i express sincere thanks to our principal dr sunil c matthew who inspired and guided the team iqac of the college in every stage of organizing this event and also for presiding over this inaugural session thank you sir for your guidance as well as support i express sincere gratitude to vice principal father dinoy matthew and barsar father joyal pandara parambil for their presence support and blessings sincere thanks to other resource persons of the seminar who were kind enough to join us for the inaugural session i also express gratitude to the convener of the program mr anish thomas and the chief coordinator dr tony thomas and other iqac core members for their sincere efforts in realizing this event i also express sincere thanks to the participants both external and in house for their enthusiastic support sincere thanks to all faculty students and administrative staff of the college and all other stakeholders thank you one and all thank you tina ma'am with this we've come to the end of the first technical session we are taking a break for around 14 minutes now and the second session will begin sharp at 11:30 am requesting the presence of all the participants on time thank you so much namaste thank you thank you very much thank you again ma'am thank you lena gahane ma'am ji ji namaste thank you, thank you very much